Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom. Thanks so much for joining us today on my YouTube channel. Today we're talking software update version 11, 2021.44.30.7, up to date as of the 14th of January, 1623, 4.23 p.m. here in Sydney, Australia, in our red Tesla Model 3 performance. We've got the full self-driving capability package. We've also got the premium connectivity package as well. Let's get into the release notes right now. So, as you can see, 30.7 is very similar to all the updates that you've seen already in the holiday package, uh, 44.25.2. So for all the details of the features from this uh, 44.30 release, have a look at my holiday update video. You'll see all the features there unpacked for you. But just a couple of things I want to point out to you before we go on our regular autopilot test drive. If we press the controls button here, I just want to point out to you, if I go to autopilot, I can see now there's a option for blind spot collision warning chime. I've not seen that before. Uh, I've seen some comments where uh, people were hoping with the blind spot camera that we see some visualization from that camera. If there's a, a car in the blind spot, maybe there's a box around it or something. So I'm not sure if that's new or not. Let's have a press. When enabled, you will hear a chime when a potential collision is detected while you are leaving the lane. So I don't really want to hear that chime, but it's good to know that's there if uh, there's a car in my blind spot there. I'd like to see uh, some more visualizations from that blind spot camera, hopefully in a future release. Something else I saw was, if I go to lights, steering wheel lights. I've not seen this one before. I'll have to uh, go out for a nighttime test drive, uh, maybe this evening, to see uh, whether I could find some steering wheel lights. If anyone's seen that, uh, leave a comment below. Uh, see what you think of those steering wheel lights. That looks new to me. All right, well, let's uh, head out to uh, do an autopilot test drive. I'll see you real soon. Alrighty everyone, I turn left onto the main road here. Looks pretty clear to me. Right, straight onto the road. Let's engage autopilot. Double tap, right stalk as usual. Got the bing at the traffic light. Put the accelerator pedal on. Match the posted speed sign of 70 kilometers an hour. 70 max is the upper limit of the autopilot session so far. And a bit of braking there next to this bus. Did that pretty well actually. Slow down next to it and then got ahead of it quite nicely. It's uh, really still a shame that uh, the speedometer is still quite small in the top right corner there. Let's change lanes to the right. We've got the FSD package as I said earlier in the earlier recap. So we've got that auto lane change option. Let's uh, match the posted speed sign at 80. Might put the back cameras on for you there and the side repeaters so you can see what's going on as well. Yeah, I mean, um, be nice if uh, Tesla offered something like the uh, extended autopilot or uh, expanded autopilot. Oop, put it back on, a bit too uh, rigorous with my holding onto the wheel there, but uh, yeah, if uh, you know, if some people don't want that full self-driving package one day, if they just want the auto lane change, which I think currently is the best feature so far of the um, FSD package without having the, uh, you know, the, uh, the FSD beta at the moment in Australia, without that, I think auto lane change is still the best feature of the current FSD package offering we've got here in Australia. So if there was some sort of middle ground where instead of paying eight grand, you pay like four or five grand to have that, uh, I suppose that EAP, the Extended Autopilot, I think uh, that'd be a good option for a lot of people. You might actually get more people to buy that package rather than having to, people thinking, well, is that $8,000 worth it? $8,000 worth it for that FSD package, uh, which is taking a long time to come to Australia, that FSD beta at the moment. It's still limited to the US, isn't it? So uh, yeah, hopefully, Tesla, if you're listening, anyone from there, I think I think that EAP halfway option would be good good to have. All right, let's match the posted speed sign to 60. Nice there, slows down to 60 quite well. Yeah, heading to Chatswood, which is about 10 minutes away, perfect for an autopilot drive. Um, gonna get some dinner for the family tonight, some takeaway. So you can see we're heading towards a red light now, so that uh, stops quite nicely without my intervention. Can be quite harsh sometimes, not too bad, not too bad. That time. And if you're the first car at a traffic light, at a red light, as you'll see very shortly, you have to um, tap the right stalk here to uh, proceed on green or tap the accelerator pedal. 
up to you. I kind of do a combination of both, depending on my mood. So about to turn green, there we go. Not too bad that time, it accelerated reasonably quickly. Had to proceed on green again with another tap because there was um, another traffic light pretty close by. And then again, traffic light, that's, uh, oh, now we're green. Again, just to confirm that green there with the right stalk tap there. So far so good, no new bugs that I can see. With basic autopilot on this version 11 update, 30.7. Pretty good so far. Some people have said they're not happy with the seat warmers, that you um, have to turn AC on in order to have the seat warmers on. Not an issue currently in Australia, it's pretty warm, but um, I can see what they mean. So if I say, for example, want the seat heaters on, but if I turn the AC off, like that, that disappears, doesn't it? So you have to have the AC on to have the seat heaters on, otherwise, uh, everything shuts off, so I see what they mean. I'll just turn that off because otherwise my tush will be quite warm. So what we'll do today is uh, when we get into the car park in Chatswood, I want to try another uh, auto park test. Now that it's camera based, see an MG ZS EV there, just passing me. Nice turquoise colour. Can't miss that. Proceeding across the uh, intersection there, that's nice, because I wasn't the first car. Still autopilot is on. Blue tram tracks there. Yes, it does work on urban roads as well. Sometimes across a wide intersection like that with um, not good lane markings, it can wobble a bit. So a bit of a wobble, a bit of a dance there on the screen, but the car seemed okay. Proceeded pretty well. Let's see if I can change lanes today on this two-lane, non-divided road. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good there. Again, that blind spot monitoring is still a bit too low. Uh, anyone from Tesla watching, I would like to see it up here probably as a little circle maybe, because there's so much room up here now. But uh, particularly when you uh, turn right, it's hard to see because you're sort of looking that way to turn right, but even when you left, your hand is blocking there. Even if, when, if my hand's not there, the steering wheel blocks it a little bit. I'm being fussy, I know, but hey, you might as well get it right, I suppose. It's, you know, there's so much room up here. But uh, still, it's an improvement. Where before version 11, there wasn't a blind spot monitor. Can't complain too much. Let's put the uh, side repeaters back on. So I turn left here into Archer Street. Archer Street is a single lane road. We'll see how it handles single lane driving on autopilot. It's still on by the way, it hasn't broken yet. Um, since I started back, back on uh, the other side of the Roseville Bridge. See that nag, that blue flash means they want me to uh, just wiggle the wheel a bit, a bit. Oh no, sorry, it broke once. I was too vigorous with the, with the, um, with the lane, keeping the lane there. So I might have to, um, take autopilot off as I turn left. My apologies everyone, there was a break earlier. So let's uh, engage autopilot again, if we're able to. Yes we can, that blue, sorry, the grey steering wheel icon was there. And as I've said in previous autopilot videos, autopilot cruise control is really quite handy for keeping to the speed limit. It's really quite nice for that, um, particularly because there are mobile speed cameras everywhere these days. If you really want to stick to the speed limit then it's really good for that. It, uh, it rarely wavers within 10% of the uh, posted speed sign or your upper uh, autopilot speed limit, which is quite nice. And then when we da dash down to 40, duck down to 40, again, you can just um, tap the right stalk down. I had to break there. I'm not sure it would have broken in time, actually, to be honest. This guy's still pretty quick. Let's see, just for the thrill of it, just one more little autopilot engage. Yeah, why not? I'll be turning right at that traffic light, but hey, why not while we can with autopilot? Okay, let's indicate right here. So this is the car park I wanna try the uh, auto park on. Those of you who are local to the area, 
this is a nice handy little car park. It's got one hour free parking. So if you need to duck into Chatswood for whatever reason, you want a quick stop, you don't want to go into one of the big car parks, this little car park is quite handy because um, it's one hour free and it's easy to get to and uh, you don't have to spiral around and around, just an easy entrance there. And uh, it's not as crowded as well as you'll see. And no autopilot doesn't work down here. <laughs> the uh, steering wheel icon is not there. So let's try to find a spot we can do an auto park test on. Doesn't seem too crowded today, so. Well, sometimes uh, this car park, uh, Willoughby Council has a um, Kangoo ZE. Renault Kangoo little van for its uh, library van. Because the library's here as well. That's quite fun to see, usually. I think there's a charger here as well, actually. I've seen the in this car park, just for the van, not for public consumption. Okay, let's have a look. So we've got some spots here we can try it on. All right, let's try at this here. Here we go. Let's start, let's see which spot it takes. Uh, waiting for me, but it's doing pretty well. Little does that car know it's on autopilot park? Auto park, it's pretty good actually. Wow, that was actually quite smooth, not bad. I mean, I probably would have um, probably just gone forward a little bit. You see that? I'm just being very picky here, but that line here means that the bumper is over that line. So um, I'd probably go for just a touch more, maybe because there was a car ahead of me, it didn't want to go ahead, but oh no, I thought it was pretty good. I thought it would actually take the middle spot and uh, actually went all the way back into this spot here. But uh, yeah, even with the car waiting, you know, did a pretty good job. One, uh, one smooth motion, impressive. I'm just gonna go forward just a touch more just because I am OCD. There we go, that's what I like. Just ahead of that white line. All right, everyone, that is uh, software update 2021.40.30.7, the third software update in about seven days. Um, went through the release notes, we went through an autopilot test drive, we did an auto park test as well. Did pretty well overall, I thought, so uh, yeah, let's give it a pass. Uh, if there's anything else you've spotted in this update that I've missed, make sure you leave a comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you at the next software update video or the next Tesla Tom Live. Until next time, happy charging.